You're tuned in to another exciting edition of Hall of Fame right here on City TV. My name is AJ Akwako Sapon. It's an absolute pleasure to be on your TV screens every week, bringing you the show that gets up close and candid with some of your favorite personalities. We allow them to, you know, show a different side of themselves, uh, probably set to rest a few rumors, and as well have a few laughs at the end of the show and everything else inclusive. Today is just like any other with another amazing personality on the show who I'm excited for you to learn a bit more about his journey over the course of two decades and as well uh, show a different side of his personality that many of his very loyal fans might not already know. This is Hall of Fame. We're coming to you live from the studios of City TV right here in Adabraka. I'll be right back with even more goodness right here on the show. You're tuned into Hall of Fame right here on City TV. My name is AJ Akwako Sapon. Find follows, join in the conversation with the hashtag Hall of Fame and tweet at me at AJ Sapon. Now, today my guest here on the show is someone I am. Um, so usually I say I'm really excited to get to have a conversation with people, but this one is on a different level. I first got... Oh, first met him. I, I, I think I was introduced to his music when I was about 10. Um, I met him when I was 12, going on 13 at the Air Force Sutherland Park. He ended up being, I think, the highlight of my teen years. He was someone I bought his cassette. I know how to rap uh, line by line some of his songs. And truly, he's been iconic in the music industry. His career spans over two decades. And he has, in this year, celebrated 20 years of his legendary album, Paimuka. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't already guessed who I'm talking about, it's the one and only Obra for Hi. Hello. <laughs> it's good to have you in the studios. Good to see you. Uh, beyond nice looking pleasure. forward to this conversation for a long time, I want to say thank you for changing my life and my view on celebrities because I met you at the Air Force Park. Mm -hmm. I was like knee high in my braces <laughs> and I, I was feeling cool and then you took time out while after performing on stage to say hi and take pictures with me and my sister. Wow. And I'll never, ever forget that moment. So thank you so much for that. The pleasure is mine. <laughs> Glory to God. Absolutely. <laughs> so this is my fan moment now. Mm. So now I would love to know where your journey or when your journey in music started. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, it would be about 22 years ago. Wow. Yes, 22 years ago, um, after my mom had passed, hmm. and I thought my <laughs> world has crumbled in, I found music. Wow. Um, it happened that uh, in the area or the vicinity where I, I live or stayed, um, a certain... Um, gentleman by name Quincy or Yawasante mm -hmm. happened to rap at that time. Um, I had to leave home. I left home after my mom had passed. Uh, what it was, it was quite difficult to understand and take a full grasp of what had happened. Mm. And I, I, I think it, it changed me. It changed how I perceive even God himself. Wow. So, yes, I fell off my faith. Um, growing up as an Adventist, my mom taught me everything, and I depended on, on her so much. And so it was quite hard to... to, <laughs> to understand or to conceive or to assimilate uh, what it was that uh, he should be taken away mm -hmm. at, that, at that time. If I may ask, what happened to your mom? How did she pass? Well, um, I think, uh, yes, I think I had gained access um, to set form okay. um, to um, St. Peter's Secondary School in Kwetia. And I had been in the school for less than a week. And my mom had come for a funeral, okay. and she fell ill. So I, I had to uh, bring my mom back to Accra, took her to the Seoul hospital at 37. And uh, whilst I thought she was okay and everything was fine, she gave him. Wow. Mm. 
just and so I, I couldn't go back to school. I was so devastated. <laughs> that that was that was it. That was it for me. And at that time, I thought I, I had been faithful. <laughs> I can imagine <laughs> to, yeah. to to God. So it it was such a huge blow, and I I I fell off. I fell off the faith. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you discover music? Did you always have the ability to rap? Did you just no. suddenly... <laughs> no. I didn't know how to rap. Just <laughs> that um, I was a, a hip-hop fan. Okay. Yes. Back, back in secondary school, yes, we would all jump to hip-hop. Though I was that, that uh, creepy type. I really? wasn't an SU member, though, but uh, I think the faith, the Adventism, uh, had gone in me so much that uh, I, I used to preach at school. Huh. Yes. So uh, I, it <laughs> was something I wanted to belong. I mean, when guys meet and they are <laughs> chit chatting about, okay. about hip hop, I wanted to belong. So, yes, I, I had to listen to the likes of Tupac, the Biggies, Naughty by Natures, mm -hmm. and all that. So, yes, I. I was a, a little bit into hip hop, but then I I had never thought that I, I would even <laughs> start putting start, yeah, okay. rap. And so, uh, like I said, I, I, it took my friends, and and I was in a situation after I left home. I was living on my own, taking care of myself, because I I left home <laughs> by choice, mm. and so I had to fend for myself. Okay. And um, it was a means. It came to me as a means for survival. Wow. Yes. Rap came to me because Quincy, as at that time, would rap and anywhere in the community, be it at parties, and, and he was being uh, giving gifts. Huh. So, yeah, that attracted me. Okay. <laughs> uh, that means I, I could also do uh, this. Do and this. So I went yeah. to him. And I begged him to teach me how to rap. And he said uh, it was going to cost me some money. Um, at that time, my monthly reimbursement was about uh, one city, 50 pesos. Okay. And Quincy was going to take um, uh, two cities in two weeks. Two cities in two weeks. Which is way more than way, you could yes. get in the <laughs> I, I couldn't touch that much above my weight. So I had to start writing my own lyrics. Huh. So you couldn't even wait for him to teach no, you? Said, oh, no, no. But um, well. you know, he was my friend. Anytime he comes around, I, I, yeah, I'll go around him, sniffing around. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and, and one day, uh, something happened. He left his book, his rap book, uh, Unguarded, <laughs> and I, I took a glimpse, I took a, a look, and I realized that uh, there was a, a way he goes about huh. coming about his words, and I learned that. I, 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 I pocketed that quickly. <laughs> okay. And, and, and so, yes, when he decided that he was going to charge me for, for, for that, I, I was like, okay, I will, I will try my my own um, and see if i'll be actually if, successful yes. with that and, and that was it um fortunately for me uh, i would say I, I i my mom had taught me um how to talk in public mm -hmm. uh, it was a ritual that um while she was alive every day uh, if you are around at the end of the day she will come to you and ask how your day went and if you uh, had engaged in any fracas, uh, she would ask, what did you say to the guy or mm. to the, your opponent? Or, and then that was how it was. He tell you, don't say that again. Say it this way. And, and so that was uh, the weapon I, I had. Wow. And it helped in shaping me. Amazing. Mm. Now, how or describe the process from becoming a coaching called underground rapper, someone who mm. was just doing it to... Yes, um, I didn't know it was something that I was going to fall on. 
Okay. Uh, back then, it was for the bragging rights, I mean, in the community, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, Quincy could rap, uh, a host of uh, other guys could rap, but then, yes, I, 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 I became uh, one of them. And at a point, uh, Quincy called me uh, to, to, to form a group uh, together with him and his cousin. Okay. Yes, and so it was. It was just for the bragging rights. Any time that boys boys meet, we would we would do that, would do our thing, and you know. So it wasn't it, <laughs> it wasn't something I had thought would become uh, my chosen career uh, path. Yeah, okay. career path. Yeah. So what did you guys? What did the three of you call yourselves? IQE. It was Impulse, the cousin. Uh, Quincy himself and myself, the executioner. So huh. IQ, impose Quincy executioner. So executioner became Obrafo. Exactly. Now, why were you called the executioner? Well, um, what, what it was, uh, when we started this, uh, my, I knew, I knew <laughs> what I was bringing okay. <laughs> on the table. Uh, I had done a research, and, and you know when hip life started it was new, so it was quite difficult for people to accept and and buy into into it. So uh, I told myself it would take a, a person in the caliber of the executioner mm. to bring sanity to, to come and sanitize okay. the game. So I chose the name executioner, but in Chi. Executioner is a bravo, oh, exactly. and we all know the executioners at the palace and their duties. I mean, uh, aside guarding the throne, they went, they do administer justice too. Mm -hmm. So I thought uh, it was a name that was fitting uh, for me at, at that point. So, yes. Now, describe your journey from becoming a part of a group mm -hmm. to becoming. Or brave for the standalone artist. Yes. yes. Um, well, uh, IQE didn't last. <laughs> it didn't last because um, my my friend the Quincy mm -hmm. mother was a pastor. Okay. And so uh, it was quite difficult going around and, and doing what we <laughs> we were doing. Sometimes we had to hide, and so because of that. Uh, Quincy couldn't uh, carry on, mm. and um, that was the end of the group. And uh, I formed another group. I formed uh, Abraham Pong. Um, I chose um, guys from my vicinity to uh, in the community. Uh, Brielle Ashes was one of them, okay. and uh, another friend uh, we used to call Shaggy. And so the three of us, uh, and a lady called Ajwa, Yes, uh, together formed the uh, Abraham Pong. And, well, I was doing everything for Abraham Pong. I was the one who was writing and even showing the guys how to go about, about it and all that. And so, uh, whilst we were together, uh, a friend of mine uh, knew Hammer mm -hmm. and his partner, Yao Anof, uh, the last two group. And so, uh, he introduced me to Hammer. Uh, I told Hammer I was with the group, and so I will bring everybody. I uh, took them to see Hammer, mm -hmm. and uh, he wanted to put us to test, but uh, he realized the guys were not really into it. And so he told me in the face that uh, you, you can't fly with all this load. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you need to shed this load for you to be able to um, become fly. okay. Yeah. And so yes, uh, Hammer this uh, disbanded a group and uh, it said it's only you I'm going yeah, with. Yes, exactly. And let's start mm -hmm. now. What was the plan of action? Okay, so you and Hammer, or you've become a part of uh, Hammer's. Jacko Ross of artist or other point in what, time? what it was um, when I met Hammer, uh, Hammer and the partner had not done any production. They oh. were inexperienced. Okay. They were guys uh, who, who didn't even know anything, but just that they had an idea mm -hmm. and they, they were ambitious. Um, when I met them, 
Hammer was drunk. The first day I, I went to see Hammer in, in his father's house at um, uh, East Legon, he, he was like sitting by um, a deep freezer, mm -hmm. uh, which is by the corner of, of the room. And he started drumming on, on the deep freezer and asked me to rap. And so <laughs> midway my, my rap, he was like, pause. And he said, you are the guy. You are the guy to give Reggie Rockstone a run for his money. And oh. Hammer doesn't know what that statement did to me. Uh, because uh, <laughs> it, 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 did, it did it all. Like, it, it, I was, I don't know, it, it, that statement really got to me. Mm. I, 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 all of a sudden, I had the belief that, yes, I, I could do what I was doing. Wow. And, and so telling me that was, was what, what uh, uh, <laughs> the catalyst. I like that. I like catalyst. that. Catalyst. Yes, for that. Okay. Yes. So describe the beginning of the musical career with Hammer. Was it an immediate, as soon as you got together with him, immediately did Pimecast start from that? I don't know, I don't know why I, I had so much belief in, in Hammer. Hmm. And his, his his partner, I, I don't know. These guys had not done anything, mm -hmm. but then uh, I believed that uh, he was the guy to 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 get me out there. And uh, lo and behold, it worked. Wow. It worked. So did you have a, a, a? Did he say, "Okay, I'm going to give you money to start off with me, or let's make it as we go"? Okay, or how to did take I you back. Um, a friend of mine. Uh, whilst I was in Abitifi, um, Presby Secondary, he, he was at um, Quail Ridge uh, Secondary. And he, he became a friend through a friend who is no more. And uh, when he got to know that I was rapping, he gave me the assurance that uh, any time uh, I get anybody that will put me in a studio, he would support me financially. Wow. And that is uh, the current manager of Edem, Dan ah, Masso. Yes. yes. So it was Masso who made that dream become a reality. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Masso was one funding. Hammer yeah. was the, directing it creatively. Yes, the producer, yes. And then that's when the Paimuka dream began. Mm. So describe the process of creating that album. Where was some of the inspirations for some of the songs? Well, uh, up to today, if you ask me how I came about that album, it will be very, very difficult <laughs> to, to, to tell you. For me, um, what, what I've always believed, you know, after I have fall off my faith mm -hmm. and everything started happening, I, I realized... Uh, it, 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 no, it, 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 this is not happening. It, this is not all happening by by itself. It's not accident. So I went back to my. So faith. that's I where went, you gained. Yes. You went back to your faith. Yes. Okay. Because yes. um, I I realized all the things that I've been taught, uh, all the Bible reading, all, all that came together, and I realized it, it would take. Uh, was it? Uh, divine. Mm -hmm. Everything that was happening to me was di was divine, and and so yes, I I went back to the faith, and uh, it all happened. It wow. All happened. Looking back twenty years ago, when Paimuka started off, did you expect the amount of acceptance that that album got from the Ghanaian public? Like uh, I was saying, even though I, I knew what I was bringing on the table, I never imagined uh, all that <laughs> that happened. Uh, I, it was so surreal. Um, like to have people hail you everywhere you go, and can they come to you and tell you uh, you <laughs> you are something <laughs> else? I, I no, I didn't. I did not dream that. I did not. Um, it, it all happened in uh, <laughs> a short time. And uh, like I said, I, I, I give all the credit to God. 
um, tell me some of the highlights of uh, in that year from the mm. album. Mm. What were some of the notable things that happened? The biggest carnival ever you would have in Ghana. I think since we haven't had anything like that. Wow. And, and for me, for the first time to perform at that carnival was 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 <laughs> was everything. I mean, though I was nervous, I remember. <laughs> and to have the grandpapa, somebody I had looked up to so much. I will tell you the history with, with Reggie. Yes. Uh, before uh, Pai Muka, before everything, uh, when we started rapping in the community, um, and when I formed the uh, Aprempong group, yes, uh, me and Ashes went to Reggie. We, you know, you know how it was. Uh, <laughs> Tory time. We we had to walk uh, from um, Achimota to Laboni. Um, wow. Yes, most times we were we were galling, you know, doing <laughs> walking on <laughs> because we didn't have yeah. the the money, and the fact that I had uh, started growing Afro, and you know, yeah, I was living on my own. My patient were friends. And uh, yes, uh, we went to Reggie a couple of times, but uh, I think it was the third time we were going to Reggie's house. And we were lucky. Uh, this time around when we went, um, he paid attention to us. And I asked that uh, I don't want anything. I want a picture of, of, of himself. And he gave me that picture. And I went to paste that picture <laughs> on the wall in, in, in the bedroom. So every morning uh, when I open my eyes, I get to see Reggie <laughs> there. So wow. Reggie was somebody I was looking up to so much. I wanted to be like him. And uh, it, it, it happened. <laughs> it happened. So yes, uh, Reggie has been... Um, that I call him the grandpapa. Yeah. And, and the revolutionist, because I, I think um, it was after his coming that uh, some of us, the youth, um, had the urge to go into, into hip life. Yeah. Okay. Did you generate a lot of revenue during that point in time, 20 years ago? Um, well, um, for me, uh, <laughs> money. <laughs> was not the issue mm. uh, for me, I, honestly. Uh, I didn't see that much uh, when it comes to Pai Muta. Uh, but uh, I realized it was my Pai Muta that, that put me out there. Mm -hmm. and, and so, yes, I, um, I had to build on from, from that point. Uh, when it comes to Pai Muka, um, no, uh, not, not myself, not Hammer. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, you know, the Paimuka story, actually, we, we, uh, we shot the, the documentary, documentary yes. it, so uh, <laughs> all the happenings will be, be unfolded in there. But um, no, I, I didn't make money. <laughs> we, we didn't make money. Uh, me and Hammer didn't make money uh, because... Um, when we recorded Paimuka, when the album was done, it was launched. But uh, when it was launched, uh, we had to shelve the album for about eight months because um, by then, Maso's family had a problem with, with him um, fi financing <laughs> a genre yeah. that they did. Nobody understood. So, uh, yes, we, we had some challenge. And, and so we had to shelve the album. But uh, it took Abraham Ohnijan to come in and make it happen. So, wow. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, for for Pai Muka, nothing came, came for us, but uh, it, was, it was worth it. I, and, and I absolutely <laughs> agree it was. Uh, we're having a conversation with the legendary Oprah for here on Hall of Fame. And when we come back, even more goodness with him, I want to know his views on how the industry was then as compared to how it is now and everything else inclusive. Stay with us. This is Hall of Fame. You're tuned into Hall of Fame right here on City TV. My name is AJ Akwako Stapon, having a conversation with the legendary Ghana Rap Sofo 
of Brafo. And uh, going back into the conversation, um, which song do you consider maybe the easiest to make or to have made in your career or the most impactful in your career? Well, I, I, I would say the Adam song. Uh -huh. The Adam song was a, a song that I, I didn't even plan. We, we didn't plan for it. It, it happened on impulse. Uh, we were in the studio, Hammer had uh, created the beat. It was the first time I was hearing it and we did what we did. So you, you can see the hook is even easier. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no multi, and it came with us all, we all yeah. used to, and yeah. then like, yeah, you know, the beat, yeah. Um, and Craig Mark um, had had a little influence okay. uh, on me. So, uh, yes, uh, you, you can see the style was Craig Mark. Me, your boy, for your boy, into the first day, me kind of playing. Okay, sure. That was, <laughs> Mark, yeah. So it was one 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 of one of the easiest and you know it was Yarnum that became the introductory song. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that which one which one which part of Yarnum was your favorite and can uh, so that you rap it for us? Mm. I mean I will, I would I would take I wrote that um at the studio there and then. Um, be a woman in Mukata Fedi Kai. Munina Munya Masu. Be a woman in Mukata Fedi Kai. Munina Munya Masu or Braffo Bacon Kai. Me Ben Munikisem and Congo Chess Kai. Rap Maba Kai. Me Sim Medimu Kai. Gana for Multimedia New Flavor Abba. Me a superpower. And Ultimamia Paba. And the way I know that, I, no, I, I will say, but he's here, so I don't need to rap yeah, it. So I'm going to leave my, it there. My favorite <laughs> on, on the Pai Muka album was Adding. Huh. Yes. Why? Uh, you know, Adding actually talks talk of the hustle, mm. um, the daily hustle. Yeah. And, and that was the, the life, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> At that time. And I think it's, to, it's, it's the life today, too. So. Like that was what I mean. It, everything was in there. Um, yeah, it was my favorite. One of my, I think Beats one of my wise. favorite uh, videos was Kwame Nkrumah. Yes, exactly. And the, oh, at that point in time, no one had ever seen it before, how mm. it was three people. And for the first, for, in the beginning, I literally assumed you were three. Yeah. And I, uh, when I was at the Pai Buka at 20, Oheni Jan said a story that people really assumed yes, you were three. Yes, yes. And you went for an event, yes. and then they didn't understand why there was only one person there. In, in, in BA, we were there, and they said we were three. And why is it that? It's just one person there. Yeah. And we, 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 we had a tough time <laughs> Con <laughs> convincing people. We were nearly beating. Wow. <laughs> yes, yes. Because everyone yes. insisted it was yeah. through Hebo. Mm -hmm. And that credit to Ibrahim Nijan, uh, who, who did, I don't know how he came up with <laughs> that, but uh, he did a wonderful job with, with that. Um, yes, Kwame Nkrumah. You see, when you talk of a rap, itself as in a rhythmic African poetry. Um, for me, um, when Reggie gave it a name, mm -hmm. I'm saying that Reggie gave it a name. Uh, yes, he gave it a name. He named it Hip Life. Yeah. Uh, my understanding as, as at that time was that, okay, um, rap started from here. Yeah. It started from Africa. Um, but it, it had to take our brothers in the diaspora to initiate it. But then when he gave it a name, I thought they knew what, what they were doing by uh, giving it a name for us to own it. Yeah. And so I, when I was coming, I was like, okay, this is ours. It's something that is ours. Uh, we have to inculcate or imbibe our tradition, our, our culture, and our way of life morality and all that in in that and you could see how Kwame Nkrumah came out combined everything history yep. and yep. all that in, yep. in a song yeah so I, I, 
Brilliant. Yeah. Now, after a, an amazing career, we sort of saw you um, do a bit of a hiatus, slow it down a bit, mm. and mm. sort of relax on the scene. What really accounted for? Okay. Well, I've, I've gone through difficulties, challenges. I've battled sicknesses. Uh, sometimes uh, I, I wonder how I'm, I'm still here. Wow. Yes. Uh, uh, three years ago, the last one that I went through was that grave that I had to be admitted at Kolebu for three months. I, wow. I was uh, at the, um, uh, how do you call it, intensive unit for so long. It My kept goodness. me there. Yeah. And uh, at a point, uh, there was no hope. But. Uh, the same God <laughs> that had always had a hand. I, I believe strongly that uh, he has a hand even in, in even human affairs came through uh, for me. And, and so, yes, that is why sometimes you, you, you won't see me. It's not deliberate. Uh, it is uh, what, what we all go through. Sometimes you go through all those challenges and it slows you down and it makes you uh, take a second look at, at, at the world and, and life in yeah. itself. And, and now I think I've become very conscious of myself now. Okay. Um, I, I think <laughs> my even all trances should be guided. Uh, I, I know, though, it was written there in the Bible that we, we would account for whatever we do here. But uh, it is when you go through such situations mm -hmm. that you appreciate uh, God, and that's exactly what it has done to me. Wow. <laughs> now, uh, 20 years celebration of Paimka, the album. Yeah. There's a whole lot that is in store for mm. the celebration mm. towards now to the end of the year. Yeah. First, I would like to know, what are some of the celebrations planned? I know there's a big concert coming up okay. as well. Right. Um, I think, uh, is it? Two years ago, or one and a half year, two years ago, yes, um, my former team and myself were, mm -hmm. were thinking. Uh, it kept, <laughs> questions were being asked, uh, what are you guys going to do for your 20 years? And so, yes, we, we had sat down, but uh, when I met my current manager, um, he decided to, like, put things <laughs> together. together well for me. And um, I think um, Yvonne Nelson <laughs> also... Uh, Instead of pressure. Yes, <laughs> uh, by, by that tweet, uh, it was everything uh, in, in, in time, stitching time, when Yvonne tweeted about the concert. And so what we realized, um, myself and my team, I realized that okay, twenty years. What what have you done in twenty years? And we realized that okay, you are in a position to to effect change. Mm -hmm. uh, you are in a position where you, when you say something, people uh, listen. People listen. So why not um, setting a goal uh, for, for for sustaining goal for yourself? And and so we we decided that um, for me. Um, rural education has been on my heart for mm. so long because um, I've been there. I, I know how it is. Uh, when you compare the <laughs> standards yes. from from that point with the urban, you 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 see the, the, the there's a large the, inconsistency there. Uh, exactly, yeah. and uh, I have taken it upon myself to to help to bring some of the challenges to the fore and, and, so, and, and also to help see how best we can alleviate mm -hmm. some of them. And, and so, yes, I have adapted uh, schools in the Eastern region, um, the Kau, where I come from, and we want to use them as a model schools mm -hmm. for, 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 for other schools. So, yes, uh, that's what we, we're working on. Uh, we think by just celebrating with a concert, it's, it's, it's not, it doesn't cut it for me. So we have to do uh, a lot more 
Um, and so that is the main reason we, why we're doing the concert. Mm. Um, we think by generating funds from, from the concert, it could go a to, long to, way. Yeah, to, to help. And um, it is not only the concert. Um, we have shot the documentary. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, uh, we did the lunch. Uh, you were there. Thank you for <laughs> being Always a pleasure. There's no way that Obama will say, I'll do an event and I'll also go. <laughs> being there. Um, yes. Um, and we want to do a cipher. Uh, there is a book coming, mm -hmm. a book about Pai Muka. Wow. Uh, how <laughs> it all happened. Yes. Uh, and then uh, the cipher and the symposium. Um, and we will top it up with the concert. Brilliant. So when is the concert going to happen? The concert is happening on the 9th of November. Wow. Yes, okay. 9th of November at the Accra International Conference Center. We cannot wait. Yes, 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 sure. We absolutely we will, cannot we will, wait. We will take you back. <laughs> back so with the documentary, uh, mm. th there's been a few things that have come out. Some people that you're expecting to shoot mm. initially didn't. I hear yeah. Sakode has now shot his part as yeah. well. Uh, and also, I recently just oh, a few hours ago read that um, uh, Hama is asking that the premiering of the documentary be stalled a bit to be able to yeah. fix some inconsistencies. Yeah. Is that the situation on the ground? And when can we, is there yes, a proposed exactly. date yet? It, 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 is, it is what it is <laughs> now. Uh, yes. Um, uh, well, the, the people we invited came and, <laughs> you know, give their testimonies okay. and, and other things. And uh, we realized that, um, just like uh, you said, there are inconsistencies. And, mm -hmm. and uh, what uh, hammer term as lies <laughs> 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 in there. And so uh, the whole team has sat down. Um, and we, 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 we think uh, we should hold the premiering and, and uh, fix it right. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, it's something that is for posterity. Absolutely. And you want the story about uh, Paimuka to be told truthfully. So that's exactly uh, our position now. Okay. Mm. So a date will be set in due Definitely. course. I love that. I love that. What are some of the things we are expected to see in the documentary? Well, uh, some of the things you've never <laughs> you are not privy to, you have never been privy to <laughs> some of the things that uh, you've never heard me even talk about wow. uh, b before. <laughs> yes, uh, so yes, it, it chronicles uh, how uh, the whole Pai Muka, the beginning to the end, and uh, the influence that uh, Pai Muka had on, on, on people. Mm -hmm. and that's basically... What we can expect. I love it. I love it. Now, coming into the music industry in general, uh, looking back at the hip life or Ghanaian music industry 20, 22 years ago when you first came out mm -hmm. and comparing it to how the industry is now, what are some of the differences or similarities uh, that you've identified? Well, um, has anything changed? <laughs> 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 that to, is a big question, has to it? To figure out. Uh, well, um, well uh, I think there's been a slight change. Um, in what way? Uh, slight change um, in our contents. Mm. In our contents. I'm not uh, saying that we've not done well um, as it is now. But I think uh, back then, uh, people choose themes and, and write <laughs> on on, mm -hmm. on them, and so songs do carry stories. Yes, uh, but uh, unlike today, you don't see that. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's, it's that bad, but uh, what it is, I've always said that uh, what is prevalent in in society at a point in time reflects in the kind of songs that we do. Uh, we do, and so you 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 can't blame anybody. Um, I don't know if we still have an industry, if we can uh, beat our chest mm -hmm. and, and say that there is an industry. Um, I'm, I'm saying this because uh, 
I, I think the right structures in, in place are not there. Um, marketing structures, good record labels, uh, uh, pff, as uh, an industry should have a regulatory mm -hmm. body that, <laughs> that laws are binding. And, and that is not what we, we see now. Um, some people have different <laughs> thoughts okay. about but what, what I'm saying. But um, if you look at what we're doing now and you think there's an industry, it's up to yourself. Uh, 20 years ago, I heard Reggie say that there is no industry. Yes, there is musicians, there is producers and all that. But I believe it is still the same. Okay. It hasn't gotten any, any better. I'm, I'm talking of uh, uh, royalty collection. Yes. And I was how do they, do they collect? Do you receive money? Um, well, for two years I have not. Wow. Yes. Uh, but um, it, it took about 11 years for me to receive anything. Yes. And wow. when I started receiving, it has stopped. Two years back, I have not received anything. And, and so these are some of the things that make me think there is no industry. Uh, and I would continue to say that until we, we change our ways. Do um, you think um, maybe policy I, direction, government direction, uh, hasn't shed or placed a lot of emphasis on the creative industry? I think so. I, I, I believe strongly, so I, I don't think anybody cares. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is what it is. I mean, that's the <laughs> bare fact. Nobody cares about uh, whatever you, you call it. I call it a game, because I think it's an individual thing. Everybody is doing his bit, and, and that is, that's not a collective a decision from our, our point. We are not united enough mm -hmm. to even say that uh, we, we, this is what we, we want, to demand what we want. We are not united. So uh, that is how it is. Is politics something you will personally ever enter? Politics. Well, I, we do politics every time, though. We do, don't we? Yes, um, <laughs> But um, like the kind of politics we do here, no, I won't. Okay. I don't know. That's just <laughs> something I would dare venture. Because um, I'm guarding um, <laughs> uh, I'm guarding what, what, what I, I came here to do. Okay. And I wouldn't want uh, anything to soil that hard end reputation. I can agree. Mm. I can certainly agree. So who are some of the artists in the industry that you think are doing great with I either mean, the, the hip-life genre? Yes. Um, I mean, hip-life, there is Sarko there, who's in, well, manifest, though. <laughs> Man, <laughs> yes. Money, yes. Money and Sarko, they the two, when it comes to the two, you know, my position. Um, I've said that uh, with, with Sark himself, I am biased at <laughs> any point in time. Uh, Manifest is one guy who has really um, uh, acquitted himself very, very well, and he keeps uh, doing that. And recently, I think Medical is another guy. Ah, which, yes, okay. I, th I think okay. Medical is doing well. Um, yes, there are I mean, a few of them. A few of them who, whose name doesn't cross my mind. Um, looking at the new school where mm. we have new people doing a, a heavy blend of hip hop with Absolutely. some Ghanaian style, <laughs> uh, is it something that you are enjoying or? Yes, I, I think this is how far God has brought us. Yes. I, I always tell people, uh, I have said time and again that. Um, at this point in my career and life, I wouldn't want to be used as a tool to destroy. Okay. I would rather uh, want to be seen as someone who's encouraging the young ones and, 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 and building them up. So um, 
I will not be too hard on, on ourselves at this. <laughs> it's our, our, our being. What, what it is, uh, I would urge them uh, to, to always uh, have it in, at the back of their minds that they're coming from here, this part of Africa. Yeah. And uh, over here, we, we hold morality in high esteem. And so, yes, they should be guided by the things they say. And that is what would, would make them know. In Bible tradition, in our culture, in, in their songs. And that's what will, will make them stand out. Wow. Mm. Honestly, like, if you could, I, I, I'm grinning so much like an idiot. Like, uh, as, as a proper fan moment. And to know there's an image or mental image I've created a, about you in mm. my head. And for you to surpass all of that, I am... Um, in complete awe. So we're here having a conversation uh, <laughs> right. with the legendary of Ralph. Uh, I'm you. having a fangirl moment right now. But let's take a quick break. When we come back, even more goodness right here on Hall of Fame. You're tuning in to Hall of Fame right here on City TV. My name is AJ Akwako Sapon, having a conversation with the legendary of Ralph Four. Special thanks to First Choice on My Hair and you've all the jewelry for my jewelry this afternoon or should i say this evening right here on the show um now going straight back into the conversation with obra for and i've seen um some recent articles where you have stated that i you don't want to be described as a legend why not do you do you view yourself as a legend uh, a legendary artist no i i don't think I, I'm, I'm done why with not my work okay. <laughs> <laughs> and i i don't I think I fit in, in, in that shoe. I, huh. I, I think we are abusing the word <laughs> legend. <Okay. laughs> yes. Because I, I, no, I don't see myself as such. I, I, well, uh, I, I don't know, probably maybe me, my, my, my understanding to, to that word legend mm. is, is quite different. It's, it, it, <laughs> involves a lot. Yeah, too much pressure. <laughs> <laughs> involves a lot, and, and that shoes are too big for 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 me to fit in. So um, I I've always said that um, it's it's good for posterity to to judge all of us. Uh, it is not about time for us to uh, tout ourselves mm -hmm. as whoever and whatever. I mean, our works will speak for us. So uh, if they, they can, Mr. Uh, Al. <laughs> <laughs> but is retirement something that you ever even think about? Or you feel it's, it, it, retirement is not even something that should be even considered? Yes, yes. It shouldn't be <laughs> something that uh, I should consider. Okay. Uh, I think uh, this is the passion. Mm -hmm. I, I love doing what, what I do. I've said that uh, it is only and when I hear in my spirit that God says, Kabina, uh, 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 what you've been doing all this while, I, I think you should mm -hmm. put a hold to it and, and go on a different path, that I, I would, yes, respond uh, <laughs> positively to that. Okay. Uh, but um, other than that, uh, I love what I'm doing. Um, I, I like I like singing, I like singing. No, nowadays, I I don't even feel like rapping. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I love singing. Um, you know, growing up, my dad used to play um a lot of high life. Okay. Uh, from Nana Kwame and Pedu to Obobaje, Adofo, Rambles, and and talk of them, Victor Waifu and all that. So yes, high life has had an influence on me that much. So you can you can all attest that uh, sometimes when you listen to me sing, uh, even my hooks on songs, yeah. it's, it's, it's all high life, and I enjoy it. That, that is the true Ghanaian music that we, we 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 grew up on, and so definitely would have. Yes, I know you know me. Uh, by rap, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, people didn't know that side of me. That uh, when I was young, I used to sing with my mom at church and all that. So definitely, that influence will have a hold of of me. I and like that. I like yes. that. Yes, and besides, I'm growing. 
<laughs> I'm aging. Yeah, I can agree. You, you understand. Uh, I don't think I'd, if God will allow me to live till age 70, 80, I could have the same energy to rap. But with singing, even if I'm lying down, I could sing. So. <laughs> I like, I like, I like. So, yes, yeah, so it's, it's something I'm honing. I, I'm, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I'm honing. But people like my rap, so uh, you can't do away with rap. True, definitely. true yeah. that, true that. Bit of pieces for now, time flies when you're having a blast, and that's unfortunately what we've come to, so I have to let you go back. Final, finally, before I do... Um, mm. What should people expect from Abra for over the next couple of months and probably into the next years? Well, um, what it is, right after the concert, mm -hmm. uh, my uh, seventh album, wow. the Abra for Frontier, it will be out. Abra for like the foundation? Abra <laughs> <laughs> for Fro. Okay. Yes, Abra okay. Fro. The Abra for Frontier is the foundation. Abra uh -huh. Fro is the album. Okay. Yes, the the the, the Bravo for album will be put out, and um, my myself and my team are are working. Uh, we want to relaunch <laughs> my career again. Okay. Yes, and so we we talking. We we looking at um, licensing our music worldwide. We we looking at um, bringing. New repertoires nice. and 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 with the foundation to ongoing, and it's something that I want to surpass me. Uh, I want the foundation to outlive me. Yeah, and and so yes, we working hard, and they would hear a lot, a lot more from me, God willing, and I know God has granted it already. Amen to that. <laughs> Amen to that. Thank you so much, Obrafo, for being hey. here. This has truly been a very wonderful conversation. Thank you. And I look forward to doing this again. Uh, yes, sometime yes. soon, probably on radio. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it should happen again. Yes. But, but thank you. Thank you. I want to use this medium to say thank you uh, to uh, everybody, but uh, most especially uh, the CEO <laughs> of, 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 of this company. Uh, Mr. Summers, and and then all of you. I mean, for you, I owe you a lot. Uh, but I want to say that in in front of everybody, I want you to thank uh, my dear sister for being <laughs> there from day one, and I appreciate that. Uh, I'm saying that. God continue to bless you. I know you are blessed already. Amen. So. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity. I enjoyed myself. Thank so. you so much. Now, uh, with, with such words, I don't even have anything <laughs> else to add. Um, thank you for being tuned in. I hope you enjoyed today's edition 